Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn what is a deadlock and how do they occur. A deadlock is a condition where two or more processes or transactions block each other from continuing because each has locked a database resource that the other transaction needs. Neither of the transactions here can move forward as each one is waiting for the other to release the lock. When a deadlock occurs, SQL Server will choose one of the processes as the deadlock victim and roll back that process so that the other process can move forward. SQL Server has a deadlock monitor thread that will periodically check for deadlock situation and it runs every 5 seconds by default. When it detects a deadlock, the interval will fall from 5 seconds to 100 milliseconds and when it don't find any deadlock, it will put the interval back to 5 seconds which is the default value. Once a deadlock victim is chosen, it will roll back the transaction of that victim and return error 1205 to the user which states transaction was deadlocked on resources with another process and has been chosen as a deadlock victim. The user can rerun the transaction. All the changes that has been performed by the deadlock victim will be rolled back. How a deadlock occur? We'll see an example scenario using a pictorial presentation. Let's say I have two tables, table 1 and table 2 with employee details in table 1 and employee salary and address in table 2. We have user 1 executing transaction T1 that contains two update statements. Similarly, we have user 2 that is executing transaction T2 even that also contain two update statements. Transaction T1 starts first updating table 1. Since no other transaction has acquired a lock on table 1, user 1 is allowed to place an exclusive lock on table 1. And then T2 starts updating table 2. Since no other process has acquired a lock on table 2, user 2 is allowed to place an exclusive lock on table 2. At this point, user 1 has completed updating table 1 and wants to update table 2. The transaction 1 of user 1 is blocked to acquire a lock on table 2 because transaction 2 or user 2 has already locked table 2 and not released the lock yet. At the same time, user 2 completed updating table 2 and it want to update table 1 but user 2 is not allowed to acquire a lock on table 1 because user 1 transaction is not completed yet and already have a exclusive lock on table 1. Please note these two statements are part of single transaction. So that is the reason if transaction 1 completed updating table 1 the lock is not released yet. Same goes with user 2. Okay, so here user 1 is waiting for user 2 to release a lock on table 2 and user 2 is waiting for user 1 to release a lock on table 1. So this situation we can call it as a deadlock. When the SQL server finds a deadlock, it will choose one of the process as deadlock victim and roll back its entire modifications that has been performed and the other process will continue further and the user has to rerun the deadlocked victim transaction. I'll explain the same example in SSMS. Let us see a demo. Here I have a database DB123 and I'm taking table 1 and table 2 as an example. I have in table 1 employee records and in table 2 salary information and city information of the employee. So now there are two users, one user connected with session ID 52 and another user connected with session id 60. In session id 60 we have transaction 2 and in session id 52 we have transaction 1. You can see transaction 1 and transaction 2 both have update statements. They are updating table 1 and table 2. But if you observe in transaction 1 table 1 is updating first and then table 2. Whereas in transaction 2 table 2 is updating first and then table 1 and currently there are no active locks ok so first let me start transaction 1 that is updating table 1 one row is affected now you can see the transaction 1 has acquired an exclusive lock on table 1 ok you can see the session id 52 where our transaction 1 is there now Transaction 2 has started 
and it started updating table 2 first and this session id 60 has acquired an exclusive lock on table 2 i will go to transaction 1 you can see transaction is already completed and now i am trying to update table 2 but session id 60 has already acquired a lock on table 2 and the lock is not yet released so this session the transaction 1 or session id 52 will be blocked by session 60 you can see the blocking information here you can see session 52 is being blocked by session 60 so now i am going to session id 60 and i am updating table 1 here but if you remember the table 1 has an active lock or the session id 52 has already placed a lock exclusive lock on table 1 so the session id 60 is prevented using table 1 so if i execute this statement a deadlock will occur and sql server will choose one transaction as a deadlock victim and roll back the process let me take these two tabs side by side i am executing this statement now and you can see both the sessions are waiting and sql server will choose one process as deadlock victim you can see the session id is chosen as deadlock victim and transaction 1 has proceeded you can read the error message here transaction this id 60 was deadlocked on lock resources with another process and has been chosen as the deadlock victim read on the transaction so the transaction or the statement 1 that has been executed previously is rolled back or i can say the transaction 2 has been rolled back and transaction 1 has proceeded you can commit this transaction and if you see the records of this table only transaction 1 records are modified transaction 2 records are aborted and rolled back okay so this is how a deadlock will occur and sql server chooses a deadlock victim and roll back the process there are other resources that can cause blocking which could result in a deadlock like logs worker threads memory and parallel execution related resources so our next question is if you see the session id is chosen as deadlock victim here but not session id 52 so how sql server is choosing the particular session id as a deadlock victim and how do we trace deadlock or how do we log deadlocks and how to avoid or minimize deadlock so these three we will be going to see in our next video if you want to know about locking and blocking i have already made videos about locking modes locking resources what is locking and blocking in sql server i will leave you a link in the description for all these videos you can watch it from there and i hope whatever we have discussed till now you have understood clearly and the scripts that are used in this video you can find them in the video description let's meet in our next video if you like the video please hit like button do share and subscribe my channel for more videos thank you